guess I'll tell you some history of Fontana Spears and how the company began, and then we'll see the production process as we go through the cellars. Okay? Um, Gonzalez B is a family company. It was started in 1835 by Manuel Maria Gonzalez. He was only 23 at the time. He was from Jerez. He didn't have a lot of wine knowledge, but he worked in a bank in Cadiz. So he was based in the port, and he used to see the ships coming in and out of the port. So he decided that he wanted, being a businessman, to have some of this export opportunity. So he joined forces with his uncle, who was a great wine lover, and they started up the, the winery. Now his focus from the very beginning was export, it's where he thought the growth was. So only two years, sorry, 20 years later, he made our distributor in the UK a partner in the company. Okay, the UK has always been number one for sherry, even today is our number one market. So he wanted to have really good links with the UK market. Okay, so it was the Gonzalez family from Jerez and the Bias family from London. Now they were part of the company until relatively recently, so 1988, when the Gonzalez family bought them out. Okay, so nowadays the Gonzalez family have 97% of the shares and the other 3% are with their distributors in Switzerland and Japan. Okay, they have been with us for many years and have some small shares in the company. It's still very much in the hands of the Gonzalez family. They're now in their fifth generation. The chairman is a Gonzalez, the vice chairman, my boss is a Gonzalez, her brother works in the company. They're still very hands-on day-to-day running of, of the company. Okay? And it's part of the cellar called La Concha due to the shape of the cellar because it looks like a shell. In Spanish. It was built in 1862 when Queen Isabel II of Spain came to visit the winery. So being the Queen of Spain, they wanted to do something special, so they built this um, winery for her. It's said to be designed by Eiffel of the Eiffel Tower in Paris. And here we have 214 casks. They're filled with La Concha Amontillado, which is slightly sweet Amontillado, which we basically just sell to the UK market. And smell the wine. Okay, so it's very small production. We have a small solera where they're under the floor in another part of the cellar, and this is where the oaks die. So very, very small production. On the cast, we have 115 flags, which re represent the countries we were present or we have been present in the past. Okay, for example, we have some strange places like Antarctica and the Vatican and places like this. But we're actively working, as in we have orders, events, importers, etc., in 104 countries throughout the world. Okay, so we're in the majority of the markets, obviously mainly with Tea of Pepe, our number one brand. But now we're trying to get into other, we're actually trying to open up offices throughout the whole world to have better uh, communication with the importer, with the end consumer, etc. Okay, so we have our own distribution in the UK, own distribution in Mexico, own distribution in the US. We have an office in Germany, which you know. And we have colleagues in Brazil as well. Okay, so we're opening up kind of around the whole world. Okay. Um, as I said, this is where it all began back in 1835. In the 1980s, the family wanted to expand into other wine regions. At that time, the most famous were Cava and Rioja. So we bought sailors in both Cava and Rioja. Since then, we've either built from scratch or we've bought over other sailors. And we now have eight wineries throughout the whole of Spain. And we have our first um, sale, if you like, in Chile. We've just bought from Chile. Okay, so we are Bodegas Teal Pepe, it's what everybody knows us for, but we also have a full um, portfolio, if you like, of all different types of Spanish wines. Okay. okay, so this is a small museum dedicated to the harvest time. So we have different machines used throughout harvest. Obviously, the original Lagar, when they used to press using their feet. In the 1970s, we decided to centralise the vinification. So previously, we had vinification plants in every vineyard, but obviously, all the must we were getting in were slightly different. So in the 1970s, we built another cellar called Las Copas, which is five minutes down the hill. And this is where we have all of our vin vinification now. Okay, it's a more industrial plant. It's where we have reception of the grape, pressing of the grape, fermentation tank, ageing and bottling. Okay. So if all the grapes from the vineyard go to Las Copas, and in Las Copas, we have two lines of vinification. We have pneumatic presses and we have continuous press. Okay, so from the pneumatic press, we get up to 60% of what we call the first yema, so the best must, that either free run must or really lightly pressed. And this is all used for teal baby. Okay. The next 10% that we get from pneumatic press, um, we would use for things like our dry Oloroso Alfonso. 
and the next 30 per cent we sell for distillation. You know in Jerez we can only use up to 70 per cent of the press for sherry wines. Okay, the rest can be used for white table wine or we can sell for distillation. Okay, we don't make white wine here so we just sell. In our continuous press this is where we get the mass that's going to be used for things like croft or pale cream and our blends, our mediums and our creams. Okay, so depending on what type of wine we're going to be making, whether it be fino or um, the blends, the creams, etc., we're going to use one type of press or the other. Because obviously in the case of the fino, we're looking for the finest, most elegant, most delicate must possible. Whereas in the case of the creams and the mediums, you want some more of that structure coming through from the extract of the skins. No? Something more character, more structure, more body. Okay. This is a map which shows the deal of Jerez. So as you know, it's called the Triangle of Jerez because it's basically three main cities. Jerez de la Frontera, El Puerto de Santa Maria, and San Luca de Barameda. Okay, so you can see it forms this triangle shape. To be a sherry wine, it has to be from this region. Apparently from the Moors lived here, the Arabic name for the city was Sherish, and that's where the English word Sherish came from. Okay, so sherry is the city, it is Jerez, and it demonstrates that it has to be made here. Okay. The dark green part in the map is where we have our vineyards. They're all found in Jerez Superior, which as you know is the best area to have your vineyards. It's slightly higher, it's about 70 metres above sea level, and it has the all-important Alvariza soil, which we'll see just in a minute. Okay. In our vineyards, we have Palomino and Pedro Jimenez. Here in Gondalas Bias, we don't use Moscatel. Okay, we just use the Pedro Jimenez variety. We think it was a personal decision of the founder to focus on one variety for sweet wines, as opposed to having two. Also, we have carried out many experiments during the, year, during the years, and have found that when you're making your blends, your mediums, your creams, etc., we prefer to use the Pedro Jimenez because the Moscatel is such an aromatic variety, we think it overpowers the Palomino. And we want the Palomino to always be the dominant force, even in the blends. Okay? So our vineyards are about 96% Palomino, and we have a very small percentage of Pedro Jimenez, only 24 hectares. We're one of the only wineries in Jerez to have Pedro Jimenez planted here. So you know the Consejo allow you to buy your Pedro Jimenez from Córdoba, from Montilla, and you can bring to Jerez and make a Sherry PX, which is what we do and what most companies do. But about 15 years ago, we decided to plant some PX here in Jerez. For us, it's obviously better to have control from the beginning right through to the end, and also as an experiment to see how the grape would adapt to the temperature that we have here in Jerez. Okay, so as I said, it's a very small amount, it's only 24 hectares. At the moment, we have no finished wine, but we have the must in Solera, and it's proving to be very good quality. Okay, the difference being that the Soleo process, so you know that the Pedro Jimenez is a white variety that we sun dry using the Soleo process. So we pick it in the vineyard, we lay it out in the sparto mats, and we let it dry in the sun. So it basically turns into a raisin. This process in Cordoba takes about seven to 10 days, and here can take up to two weeks. Okay, so slightly longer, because we're not as hot as in Cordoba. And here we also have the problem of the humidity. Okay, you can see we're very close to the Atlantic Ocean which for the Palomino variety is very helpful because it keeps it cool in the vineyard. But obviously when we're trying to dry the PX, we, we don't need the humidity. So we have to build little arches over the grapes. We cover them with plastic sheets. And then in the morning, when the sun has come up and the, the dew is away, we can take the sheets off and allow the grapes to continue to dry. Okay? So it's a more lengthy process, but it's something that we're looking to, to expand in the future to have all of our PX planted here. In, in Jere, because PX for us is a very small percentage. We're a Fino house, we're Tio Pepe, we're a Montiello. Okay, so PX for us is very, very small amount. Okay, so we're just going to go down and see our small vineyard that we have on site.